If you've been around the personal knowledge management community at all, you would have no doubt heard about Readwise or Reader already. And if you haven't heard about them, then this is probably not the correct video for you to watch because I'm not going to do an in-depth review of the tools. There are tons of other people who have done that already. What I'm going to show is how I use Readwise to import my Kindle highlights into LogSeq. And the reason I'm doing this is because I am preparing for an interview with the author Bob Dotto known as The High Pony, who wrote a book called A System for Writing, which is all about using a Zettelkasten to support your writing process. I've mentioned in the video how I've actually moved away from Kindle books and have started reading a lot more physical books, but I wanted to get my hands on this early and unfortunately it was not available in South Africa. So to Kindle I went. And I'm quite glad because it has brought up a whole bunch of things for me that are sort of relics in my process, which I'm going to then be chatting to Bob about and see how I can improve it. So that video will be coming up in a few weeks time. If you also want to read the book ahead of that, I highly recommend it. It is one of the best books on writing using a Zettelkasten out there. I wish this was out a few years ago before how to take smart notes took off because this would have been the book that everyone would have read and spoken about and it's much more practical yeah anyways have a look i've got a link below which is an affiliate link on the amazon page so trying that out too and yeah let's get into how i use readwise taking some steps back before we take some steps forward this is references from the course on logseq mastery but it's really generic information so i think about note-taking as this non-linear dynamic approach and it's there's really a number of activities that are encompassed in this so it's the input organization retrieval and then output now you would have seen this in Tiago Forte's building a second brain as code so capture uh, organize distill which is basically like summarizing the things and then express and that would be the output so not using fancy acronyms yet but just going to focus on the capture and organize part in this space and I'm, I'm in the process of moving things over to mirror so that everything will be a unified visual experience but i'm going to go over to mirror and show the, the diagram from a video that i made a few months ago now this is breaking down the capture step and as you see there's a number of different categories of here so personal writing external inputs and action items and i've made videos that talk about a lot of these things but i haven't really spoken to this little logo over here which is what we're doing today so that's the readwise thing so a lot of things go to omnivore for me or you know straight into my daily journals in logseek but i started using readwise really early on and became quite evangelical about the tool and then took a step back as i found ways to circumvent using readwise and part of the reason i'm making this video is because i've been actually been using readwise for a number of years now over two years and one of the videos that I made was looking at how you can import your own highlights into a spreadsheet and then use that to create text that you could then import into LogSeq and it was just very clunky and messy and when I started taking notes on my Kindle the whole thing fell apart and then people were asking me to update the Google Sheets that I'd uploaded and I wasn't actually using it anymore and one of the lessons that I've got here for myself is if it's going to save you time just pay the money so that's what i've been doing i've been paying readwise as a service that integrates these different parts of my system so I, whatever i read on my kindle i import via readwise into logseq and part of the reason why i don't use readwise the reader app which is also a really good application but the limitation is that it imports everything as separate pages in logseq and obsidian and that's not something that I, or I don't enjoy that workflow. Now I could move them all across to my daily journals, but Omnivore is how I read articles. I don't mind having books being their own separate pages because there's lots of information in books, they're information dense, but I prefer to have sort of loose information appearing in my daily journals. Now I've spoken about this a lot, but it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to get into the details. The other aspect is that I've actually stopped reading or buying books on Kindle. I prefer to buy physical copies because I like to annotate in the books with pencil. This has been like a recent evolution of how I read. I find I read slower. I find I enjoy the process more and I review the materials more. So as I mentioned, Readwise is also a spaced repetition app where it shows you some highlights from your, from your favorite books and you can also favorite your highlights. 
and it shows you these quotes at a time interval that helps you remember them. But my goal is not really to remember quotes. My goal is to synthesize information and enjoy the process a lot more. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of caveats and disclaimers there just about the way that I do things. Let's go have a look at Readwise and see how it looks. Readwise is, as I say, this bridge between your input and your data storage. And it allows you to have different connections. So if I look over here, I can import highlights from a number of different sources. I've connected mine to my Kindle, to Snipped, and to Readwise Reader. But I don't use Readwise Reader because of the reasons mentioned earlier. And I've actually disconnected the Snip on the Snipped side because I don't want all the things that I'm consuming there to become messy in, re in Readwise. I want to just be simple and be able to manage it as a stack of information that it comes in and then I tick it off and I move it across. Okay, but you can see here, there's a number of different sources that you can connect, Twitter, Medium, short form. Before I get into the export side of things, I want to just speak to the highlights component here. As I said, Readwise also focuses on space repetition. It allows you to resurface highlights from books that you've read and it sends you emails which have your favorite highlights and then it gives them to you on a space repetition cycle so that you can memorize things. But that's not really how I engage with my highlights anymore. I just want them to be in a place that I can access them and read them if necessary. As I say, it's like going back and flipping through the pages of a book. That's what I'm wanting to do with my Readwise export. Okay, so if I look at it, let's go to LogSeq export here. The way that I get there is if I go to export, you'll see I have a number of different connections and I've got LogSeq and Tana, but I'm looking at LogSeq today. So I just would go there and I'd say configure. But I've opened it up to save time because my internet seems a bit slow today. Okay, so two important points here. I like to include highlight locations and I like to use custom formatting. It's almost imperative for me to use custom formatting and this is part of the reason why I'm doing this video. And the highlight locations are something that I've gone backwards and forwards on. You know, it adds a lot of clutter to the text as it comes into LogSeq. But what it does allow me to do is click on that highlight location and open the Kindle application on my PC to give me the same effect of paging through a book. Now, it's nowhere near the same, but it's still nice to go and access that highlight in its original context. And there's a whole bunch of things that I'm doing over here to give me the output that I want. Some of this stuff is, you know, required by Readwise in order to, or LogSeq at least, to make sure that information comes through in a consistent format. Other stuff is my own personal preference. And I'm going to copy this and make it available in a blog post so that you can go and look at it. Okay, so on the page metadata, basically I'm adding page properties to enable me to like filter and slice and dice this information. I'm adding a highlights header to separate the different highlights. And then the highlight itself also has specific formatting and I'll show you why. Okay, don't really look at the sync notifications. If I scroll down to the bottom here, I like to select only a single item to import or, or well, you know, if I was importing more than one thing, it's very easy. But this is part of the reason why I cleaned it up from the articles and the snipped podcasts. I just wanted to have this be books, only books in Readwise. It just keeps things simple. And also, as I mentioned, because I don't like having everything as its own separate page, especially like very small pieces of content. Okay, so I select this. And then if I go to LogSeq, this button over here is my Readwise plugin. And if I open it or if I click on it, it gives me a bunch of settings. Now, I've chosen to not sync automatically when LogSeq opens. I do want to resync deleted pages because, you know, for configuration purposes, sometimes I might delete a page and then bring it in again once I've made some changes, especially if I'm doing a demo. And I also, well, the customized formatting things are how it comes in from Readwise. What I also want to show you is just in the plugin settings over here. This is basically the back end of that. So here that resync deleted pages is enabled. I've chosen to not sync automatically. And the second thing about the syncing is that I, I say never resync. I just found that sometimes when I was typing something, log readwise would resync and then I would lose my train of thought or something would happen. I don't actually know why I started doing this, but for me, this works well. I control when I sync by just pushing this little button over here. So push that button here, initiate sync, and I'll get some dialogue down here and up there. Syncing Readwise data. 
And there we go. The Readwise Sync is completed. Now, how do I find this information? Well, I know the book is called A System for Writing, so I could just say System for Writing, System for Writing, and there we go. I could pick that up. But well, actually, let me just do that here. But you'll see here that one of the properties that I use is source readwise import. Let me just click that to show you. If I go to the readwise import page, all of these are link references. Now you'll see here that this is when I was still using reader to do my, my article, read it later. So this makes it a bit difficult to find the information down the line. But what I can do is I can say filter for books. There we go. And I could filter for Bob Dotto. And actually, let me just filter for Bob Dotto there so I can find the book that I want. And there we go. I can then navigate to this book. And you'll see on the metadata, this is on my own custom CSS, not important. I'm actually moving away from doing custom CSS. But I use these page properties to say, okay, who's the producer? And producer is just like a step above author. So if I have a content creator, for instance, that made the video, I would say producer Thomas Frank. And it's the same thing. It just enables me to have a very generic way to filter the information. And then the source there, that's another property, readwise import, and then the status to process. Now, honestly, I don't really use these statuses very much, but it's nice to have it if I want it. The real thing for me is to be able to separate what is mine and what is not mine. So you'll see I've brought in this passages header over here, and then these are all the passages from the book. And all the passages, all the quotes have this gray block around them. And that's because of the formatting of that little carrot, side carrot, greater than sign, in the Readwise export page that I did. And that gives me the distinct view of what is the author's. As I said here, the, loca uh, the location does look a little bit clunky, especially when you click into the text, but it's really nice to be able to go and open that page over here. Okay, let me just say open Kindle. There we go. It opens the book in the Kindle PC app, and there is the highlight over here, which is literally the first page of the book. But I can then scroll through and see different highlights. This is really a great book, by the way, if you are at all interested in Zettelkastens and systems for writing, highly recommend. Moving back to LogSeq, what I want to show here is also where I have taken my own observation notes. Okay, so here's an example here. If I just say note taking, oh, let me, this is not a typical way that I actually show LogSeq. Sorry, it was in the wide mode. But anyways, I've got here this note, note taking is writing and writing is a path toward knowing. Taking fleeting notes is the first step in knowing what you think and believe. And I took a note here, and this excuse this type here because it's from my Kindle, but an analytical knowing. Okay. I historically had this tag called observations, which would automatically come, come up, but I stopped using that because it was just like tons of observations and I didn't end up going and processing them. This is one of the things that I want to chat to Bob about because I, you know, there's a massive book notes and yeah, lots of different things that I want to do. One could theoretically structure your export settings to have this automatically tagged to all of your own observations. This is very possible. I stopped doing that because I wasn't processing them, but it could be useful for you. Okay, so anyways, I have a very clear distinction of what is mine, what is the author's, and all of the content over here. Now I could go through and tag different pieces of information. And this book, I'm not going to go and do it for this example here. Well, maybe I should in preparation for the conversation I'm going to have with Bob, but I'm going to show you an example of a book that I've already processed. This is an interesting example of a book that I've already processed. You can see here, I didn't actually change the status. It doesn't really matter. I've reshuffled and rejigged this because I want to use this as a reference. And these are some of the notes. So the gray stuff is from the author. And if I just scroll down, I have basically grouped things into different passages. I've added some tags over here so you can have everything in life you want if you just help other people get what they want okay so you can see yeah if i <laughs> probably use this in some other places let me open the block reference yeah so i made another page on seo and then i brought in a whole bunch of things from that okay so 
it's just about having the notes in place and then enabling me to rejig them, see what's mine and see what's others. Very simple. And yeah, I hope that makes it clear. Thanks so much for watching. If you, by some miracle, are a person who has not used Readwise or heard of Readwise, then you can sign up using one of my affiliate links below and yeah, you'll get an extra 30 days on your trial and I might make some money out of it. So I'd really appreciate that. It's a really great tool. As I said, they also have the reader application, which is an excellent read it later app. I just don't like the way that I import articles from reader. So that's why I stopped using it, but it really is an excellent app and they've put a lot of thought into it. Very usable and yeah, you can also read PDFs and a whole bunch of things in there. Check it out. Have a look at the link below.